Well, one of the things that you say there that makes a lot of sense is, obviously, if you're running, as you say, like a script style, basically like a hard tactic style from Spawn, so that the plan is already known. As you say, the most logical person that's going to help is someone who has no experience. Basically, the person who, as we're saying here, like they wouldn't be able to make a good decision on their own in that situation, or they might do something that you know just makes sense for what the rest of the team's doing. As a result, right, if we look at your career especially the latter years of 1.6 when obviously Na'Vi existed and had the big players from your country. In basically the end of 1.6 and then most of CSGO, you were never working with the best CIS team. You had to have the second or the third best and so you were working with lesser talents or in your case, it was often younger talents. It was the players who hadn't yet been to the Na'Vi's of the world and they were kind of coming up in their career and they met you at that point. In fact, in this sense, you were the Hunden in that case. You know, you were the person that they met and they learned the game from, right? Did using that style, like set tactics and scripts, is this one of the reasons why you have that crazy track record where even if the team was not that good in actual like normal circuit, you just kept qualifying for the major every time. And I've been back and looked at this, dude. It's not even like people are just making like a cool story for a movie now. If you go back and look now, even when I look now and I know the context of all the players on those lineups that you had, on paper, you shouldn't have qualified for almost any of those majors. I mean, the first period was where you could never use simple because it was ESL major. Then later, you obviously had some lineups where, like, the only big name was Electronic in the latter days. Like, there's a lot, like, pretty this way, not a lot of people thought Will did it was a great player. And he was the best player in Flipside and sometimes. So, was this approach actually ideal for the players you had at the time, though? Do you think this is what helped you kind of get into those majors? Absolutely. Uh, I was trying a lot of, uh, a lot to approach a game like that. Uh, we set up strats from Spawn, like, like scripts. And uh, one of the great examples for that is uh, it's actually works a lot um, in best of one. And uh, one of uh, the good examples is uh, PGL Major. Uh, we uh, have won a uh, face on Mirage. Uh, it was like 16 4, I think. And it was like the whole game plan was built like uh, we make this script. And then I think they will change something. We will do game. Uh, they will we will do next round this script, and then they will realize we're trying to see some um, hesitation in their head. What we are trying to do, they will change something. We'll now we do this script. So you can approach uh, to the game like this, like this, but it's not like you can be the champion with that uh, approach. But you can uh, surprise and you can. Uh, Mm. As underdog, you can surprise your opponent and uh, actually snowball them. And it actually works a lot, uh, very good on uh, T side because uh, you, you can do a lot of stuff on CT side uh, in terms of scripts. So, yeah, we like, we were, we were, we were trying to change pace, uh, change the. If what is good in scripts that you can. Uh, set set the all scripts before the match. You can uh, train them as good as possible, so they will be. The one important thing is that script must be perfect. Actually, if uh, somebody is executing badly and uh, not with a good quality on, in terms of mecha mechanics, uh, you will not succeed. So uh, we were trying. We were playing like nine eighty percent by scripts actually on T side. And we won the phase like 16-4, I told you, and I watched the demo before, after that, and I saw that how they were like uh, uh, lost in the game, actually, really, really lost. Uh, and I realized how proper, proper if you set up your uh, script properly, one by one, change properly, uh, basically it's a, like strategy, not the tactic. So you have like chain of tactics, and in that terms, you can like uh, smash it, the opponent, but it depends on how you, how good you analyze your opponent, actually. Uh, and not uh, one minus, it's uh, good for best of one matches. Uh, you can be uh, stable with that because uh, you can like have. 40 scripts uh, for one map because you can expose uh, nowadays your, your, your tactic, enemy will analyze it, and then uh, you need to do you, another one, but you didn't practice it. Uh, you can only have like, 
let's do like this. We'll change some details. Uh, let's view, for example, new rush, but it's not perfect execution and it's uh, easy to counter for your opponent. So uh, after that, I realized that uh, it's not so efficient. And after flip side, uh, when I started like coaching career, I started to actually had already had a lot of ideas like typed down. What should I do in future? How would I need to evolve the team as a coach? And uh, I changed everything uh, based on my experience. And I realized that now, now I need to always depend on what is going on uh, during the mid-round, only like this. So yeah, okay, like 10%, it's still like scripts because scripts because it's, you, you still can use them because for example, uh, uh, you see the opponent is always playing, playing like 4A or 3B, doesn't matter. <clears throat> they do something, they're trying to abuse something and you just you know that this script will work perfectly for them, for example. And you still use it, but mostly uh, nowadays I try to approach like um, to create something on the map and then depends on what is going on. I try to teach like Bomich uh, to call the proper uh, stuff, like proper direction of our uh, attack. Mm -hmm.